Today we are going to reveal new components for Grasshopper that come with Rhino 7. I am going to show you how we can create, import and manipulate sub-D geometry using Grasshopper. Without further ado, let's get started. Hi guys, Lazar here. Before we start, if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell button so you don't miss anything as we upload new tutorials each week about Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use them specifically for architecture. Alright guys, components that we'll talk about today are placed in the Surface tab Sub-D panel. So these five components will be our topic today. The first one I'm going to show you it's called sub D from mesh. I'm going to turn off the final output and this is the mesh that we uh, we have here. The first mesh consists all faces except uh, these on the top and on the bottom and uh, this component uh, contain these uh, nine faces. First I'm going to weld this mesh and here we will merge all faces then we will join them as you can see if we add naked vertices this is component from um, kangaroo is placed here and once i turn on here we have the naked points uh, and naked points are also shown here and here that's why because we didn't weld the edges after we joined the mesh and that's fine the mesh we get here are going to place in the component sub d from mesh and we have here three more inputs. The first one is the crease, the second one is the corners and the third one is interpolate. In these two inputs we should place values either one or two. I'm going to turn off this one and let's see what we get once we place a mesh in the sub-D from mesh. You can see how it's converted to sub-D geometry. And that's uh, this is the result if we place in the CR1. Let's see what, what's going to happen if we uh, place two. As you remember, here we have naked points or naked edges here. And that's why uh, the crease is created here and here. So if we set two, uh, crease will be created. If we set one, we don't have any, any creases. If we set one for the corners, the corners will be smooth. If we set two, the corners will be sharp. So we have these two options. And you can combine them. If I, I weld uh, the mesh, I couldn't use the creases. Let me show you. So either I place one or two, uh, the output will be the same. That's because we don't have uh, naked edges here and here. All right, I'm going to delete this one. And uh, uh, the fourth input is the interpolate. I prefer to set false, but if we set true, we'll interpolate mesh vertices. And that's visible if we uh, set creases to 1. I will set back to false. The other input I'm going to show you is sub D from edges. We use this component if we want to extract uh, the edges from sub D. The first output is line, edge line. Basically, it extracts uh, the edges in the low poly version of sub D. If you're familiar with sub D on tab, you can switch from smooth to low poly version. And here we have the edges of the sub D in low poly version. And here we have the edges in uh, smooth version. Here always the output will be line, but in this output, usually we have curves. And that's fine. But if we want to, let's say, separate, for example, we want to extract naked edges, we need to use the T output. T output, it's some kind of description about the each edge. For example, edge with index zero, you can see here, it's smooth and it's interior edge. If we scroll down, for example, edge with index 43, it's a crease and it's a naked edge. That's fine. And um, you may wonder how we can extract them. I'm going to use component match text and that component is placed in the sets tab, a text panel. So I'm going to place this text in the T. In the P we'll say, okay, find the text which contains a word crease. And don't forget to place the word between two asterisks and the output uh, is true and false. If I scroll down, when I find 41, 
if I scroll here, 41. We have the word crease and then that's how we get this true value. So if I place curves in the L input of the cal pattern, in the P we place the pattern we get from the match text. Uh, once I turn this on, we get here only creases. Let me set here to two. If I set to true, we have uh, we don't have also crease on the outline of this sub D, but we also have creases on the top and on the bottom. And for example, I can join them and uh, let's say create a pipe using uh, these uh, edges. All right, what will happen if I say find only smooth edges? The output will look like this. Or we can set, okay, find only naked edges or find only interior edges. All right, the next component is called a mesh from sub D. First, I'm going to turn off the final output. And I'm going to, let's say, disable this one. Okay. So, and I forgot to mention, there is also container sub D in new grasshopper. It's placed, uh, it's placed here. So I'm going to use sub D container to import sub D geometry from Rhino to grasshopper. And now we can convert a mesh from sub D. So basically this component is opposite to this one. Here, because uh, here we have the mesh, and mesh converted to sub D and here we have sub D and we convert to uh, mesh. In the D input, we have the density. Basically, how dense will be uh, the mesh? If I set to one, we get lower density. But if I set to, let's say four, you can see how, how smooth the mesh is. Uh, very similar to sub D, but with the more uh, mesh faces. And now I'm going to explain sub D control polygon. Basically this component display the low poly version of sub D, but converted to mesh. So we convert it to mesh, but in low poly version of sub D. It looks like this. So this is sub D control polygon. Now I'm going to explain you how we can create diagonal grid based on uh, mesh we get from sub D. In this case, we cannot use lunchbox or that kind of plugins. So we are going to extract uh, curves from each face of the mesh. And in the next step, we are going to extract each control point of curves. Let's turn off this one and this one. And uh, right now, let me uh, sketch here. I want to create uh, two lines within each face so like this if we create lines like this we can uh, we can generate the diamond grid basically this will be one face this be, this will be another face this will be another one and so on so in the next step we'll take out this curve, take out then uh, these control points and using list item, I'm going to connect item with uh, uh, zero with two and uh, one with three. And we'll get uh, these two lines, list item and then connect using line we connect uh, zero with two and one with three. If you want to get uh, these three inputs, you just need to zoom in and press uh, plus or minus. In our case, we'll press three times plus in order to get three more uh, outputs. Now we need to divide each lines on these uh, intersection points. But these lines are not intersecting right now. So we need to find a way how we can get these intersection points. Once we get intersection points, we are going to split each of these uh, lines into two segments. This will be one, this will be second segments and this one as well. One segment, uh, second segment. All right. First, I'm going to divide curve and divide this one. And this set of points 
will uh, project on the BRAP and BRAP it's actually sub D and this uh, set of points as well let me turn off this one here we have the BRAP closest point and using this closest point will create interpolate curve now these interpolate curves actually have intersection points okay I will turn off this one and I'm going to I'm going to explain why we cannot use these two you can see that we here we don't have intersection points but here we have so once we get these two interpolate uh, set of curves and uh, their intersection we can split each uh, each curve into two segments using shutter t a will place in the t and c will place this set of curves and the same thing will uh, do for for another set of curves if i uh, place the mouse here you can see we have one item but here we have two items in each branch the same uh, the same logic we have here all right i'm going to turn out this one and as we have curves here we need to have lines first i'm going to merge them within uh, within a single branch and then i'm going to extract and and the start point and using start in the end point we will create the lines instead of curves and this is the first set of lines we also need to have the outline of the mesh we can um, get these lines by mesh edge component and in the e1 we have the naked edges and uh, this set of lines and this set of lines we are merged into a single branch and using weaverbird mesh from lines component we will create the mesh let me enable this one all right that's how we get diamond grid on the sub d and now we can play more with this geometry let's for example uh, extract center point of each mesh face and uh, move uh, along normal vector we get this kind of mesh using uh, the Uber stellate component and now we can create the mesh frame of each mesh and get this kind of a geometry if we want to get 3d shape of each face we can apply the thickness and then if you want to smooth this mesh we can use Cutmull clark subdivision so basically in this example you'll learn how you can create diamond uh, grid panels from sub d and the last component for this tutorial is sub d fuse basically it allows us to combine two sub d into one and first i'm going to show you how it works so we if we have two sub d objects uh, that are touching each other they will merge into single sub d so first i created two boxes using center box uh, component then using mesh box i convert each box into mesh here i set uh, four divisions for both of these boxes and the uh, sub d fuse component in the same time converts mesh to sub d and then combine them into single sub d so you don't need to use sub d from mesh and then to combine them here actually we need to place here mesh and for both of these inputs so in a i'm going to place this box in the b this one and once I turn this on, we have sub D uh, based on these two mesh boxes. We don't need to combine them. Depending on the Boolean option value, we can set either union, intersection, A minus B or B minus A. So if I set zero, it's a union. If I set one, it's an intersection. If I set two, it's A minus B. And if I set three, it's B minus A. So you can uh, play with uh, this slider and also we can uh, generate the smoothing by this slider and the last thing let me show you what's what happened if uh, they're not touching each other 
So if they're not touching each other, uh, we'll get the null output. But I want to create sub D if they are not touching each other. How we can do that? We can create sub D from mesh for both of these uh, boxes. So we have uh, here sub D and here we have sub D. And this will be the output if they are not touching each other or the output is null. If the output is true or if they are intersecting, the output will be uh, from this component. So for that purpose, I'm going to use null item and stream filter. In the null item, we'll get true and false boolean values. If it's true, it means they are not touching each other because the null is here. And this will be the output. So that's why I'm going to place this in the one. If it's false, it means we have the output. This will be displayed in the final output. So that's why we place here in the zero. So if it's false here, this will be visible. If it's true, this will be visible. Okay, let me turn off this one. I'm going to turn off this one. Okay. So right now we have null, this is true, and in the one, let's place these guys. Okay, but if I move this, we have false. False means the zero input will be in the final output and the zero input is subdiffuse. And we can play more with uh, these sliders. If we change uh, its dimension, you can see how the connection between these two sub D objects are modified. For all of you who would like to go a step further, I created an extended tutorial in which we'll convert mesh to sub D and using sub D faces we'll generate triangulated panels with different offset value based on the height where the panel is located. In the last steps we'll involve Weaverbird plugin to get the panel thickness and smooth edges in the final output. This you can watch on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files. If you are interested in a structured step-by-step -step learning approach with personal one-on-one -on -one support, 24-7 and homework exercises, feel free to send application for our Rhino for Architects online course and schedule your call with us where you will get more information. The first link in the description. The course covers various topics like parametric modeling with Grasshopper, fluid form modeling with SubD, architectural visualization, animation, presentation techniques, and way more things. Last but not least, I would like to send a special thanks to all our Patreon supporters. If you like what we do, please consider becoming Patreon yourself. Take care and see you soon.